good day and I hope you're having a good week as always I want to talk about a few stories today that are in the press first story I want to talk about is Bill Barr cast some doubt on Obamagate that's not to have no hope and have no faith or anything that's not what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to explain what's going on talk about it and you know talk about the possibilities he talked about the Durham report today or yesterday I'm not sure the news broke today though and basically said that he doesn't believe that Obama is going to be prosecuted or investigated in, in a certain manner. And in order to hear that, I'm just gonna play the clip of Bill Barr in a few minutes so you could hear it from his mouth. And then we'll talk about what that might possibly mean, weigh out all the options, weigh what some people are saying, what, weigh, weigh what others are saying. I'll say what I think, and then we'll move on to the second story. Second thing I wanna talk about is Gavin Newsom changes his tune on sports teams, and it's a, I think an optimistic thing to think about because, you know, uh, he was thinking about closing stuff down longer in the democratic states, but what happens is the market of America, this is a good thing about America, we're gonna start off on a positive note, America is not just one singular country. Although this lockdown affected everyone at a certain point, there are different states and we compete with ourselves. So if Gavin Newsom tried to close sports teams till October, Ron DeSantis from Florida said, well, they could just come play in Florida you know, if they don't, if they're not going to let them play in their states, they could play here. So th from a business perspective, I think Gavin Newsom had to start sports or else he's going to lose that. And that's a good optimistic thing you could think about if you live in a blue state and you've been kind of worried recently about what's going on. I think that is the silver lining with what is going on is there's competition. And if they want to lose businesses, wealthy people, you know, over tax, over shut down, they're gonna lose the Elon Musk, they're gonna lose the sports teams, they're gonna lose the billionaires if they try to go the route of a Bernie Sanders type policy because you know, although they demonize a lot of billionaires and there are some sneaky dishonest ones that I can't stand, you know, if you look at where the taxes are paid, it's working people, it's some businesses, not all, it's some billionaires, but not all, you take those away, someone, you know, there's not gonna be the tax money unless they do a federal trillion dollar bailout again, which is very likely, but Anyway, that's the second story. We'll talk about that more. The third story I want to talk about is Bill de Blasio doesn't want people to go into the ocean or something. It's really creepy. I'm going to read the exact quote from his press conference. And he's saying, you can go on the beach, uh, but you can't go in the ocean. I believe he even uses some sort of terminology saying they will take you out of the ocean. And uh, it's just kind of creepy. And we'll talk about that. Have fun with that, although it's creepy. That's it. Those are the three stories. And another thing I do want to talk about is a few people's websites being hacked. Uh, that'll probably be the fourth story. It's unannounced, but I'll talk about it. Uh, two people recently who've been censored on social media quite heavily have been having some internet website problems. Very interesting and suspicious. That's the story of the day. We'll see who's going on. Someone said uh, there's AI bots. I, I don't know what's going on with that, but Let's do it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this to the top real quick. Someone said Joe Rogan was talking about moving to Texas. Yeah, and everyone was telling him. They're like, don't vote for your Bernie Sanders policies in Texas, bro. But, uh, I mean, everybody's considering it. So let me just pin this to the top. We'll wait for a minute or two for people to come in. That's my new email list, guys. Thank you. I've been getting like hundreds of people signing up a day. Stayintouchwithme.com. It's completely free. Least annoying email list you'll ever be on. I don't email because I can't stand emails. I don't like reading them and getting, oh, this every single day. They're like, hey, here, we have a deal for you. It's like we get it every day in email. It's annoying. I don't do that, but it is nice to have your emails. So go to stayintouchwithme.com. It's been to the top. It's a good way to collect emails. And this way, if anything happens on Facebook, on YouTube, on Google, I actually have a message, a book, or I don't know what the future holds, but I have a way of contacting you. And the more emails lists I get, the better. So stayintouchwithme.com is free. And I promise you, it's by far gonna be the least annoying email list ever. Hey, 10% off, 10% off, 10% off. It's like a Bed Bath & Beyond coupon. They just never leave you alone. It's like, I'll take the 20%, but it's, you don't have to email me every day. And we don't do that here, so. What's up, Brian? Who we got? We got Lynn. Who's in the house? Hold on. You know me. I need a, I need a little energy. I'm not saying I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. I'm not a health expert, but I, I just like it. It boosts me up a little bit. It might be a flaw. It might be a sin. I don't know, but I'm sipping. Uh-huh. What's up, James? How you doing? Appreciate you, brother. Mike from Vermont. I appreciate you. God bless Vermont. South Carolina in the house. Someone said AG Bar. We're going to talk about it. We'll play the clip. Let me know what you think. I want to hear. Uh, we'll have fun today. All right. We're going to make the most. We're going to make the most. I'm in a good mood. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Joe? Thank you, Joe. 
Someone said, have you, le have you seen the Lincoln Museum ad against Trump? No, I, I, don't even, I don't even know what they're doing anymore. Should I watch it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it true? Is it false? Let me know. Someone said the military is not going to prosecute anyone. We'll talk about the possibilities. I have mine, and we're just going to do what we do best here is try to keep it as real as possible, have some fun. I don't know. It seems like people like when I throw this hat on and I start making an accent. I might do that. I might not. We don't know. You really never know. It's, it's unpredictable. Thank you, California in the house. I got some good news for California. I know it's creepy. I know it's weird, but there's something in the air. It might be freedom. It might be petroleum. You know, the oil prices are going back up. It might be the Dow Jones. I don't know what it is, but I smell it. Hopefully it's not a gas leak, but overall, you get it. You got it. What's up, Neil? What's up, Glenn? What's up, Chris? Someone said nothing wrong with drinking coffee. Before we start, isn't that interesting with health? Health is one thing I'm interested in. Obviously, we know like exercise, drink water, like things that are pretty basic. Um, but with health, it's like, eat vegan. I'm like, okay, they're like, no, don't eat vegan, only eat meat. I'm like, wait, should I eat all vegetables or all meat? And they're like, no, just eat this. And then they're like, drink coffee, it's good for you, don't drink coffee. I'm like, why is that, it's so, you know? That's why you can't really censor people too much. Like, you got Susan with Jackie, she's like, anybody who says vitamin D is the cure is getting banned. It's like, Susan, relax, okay? You're not the queen of health, you know, you're not the queen of censorship. I'm not saying it's the cure for everything, but vitamin D and sunlight is good in moderation. You know, so I, I always want to learn, but this is one thing they're like, it's like, I got two different people in front of me. They're like, eat vegan or else. I'm like, okay, for sure. And then they're like, eat meat, only meat, no vet. I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's why I just drink coffee. I'm like, you guys are scaring me. Thank you, West Virginia. Country roads, take me home. That's one of the best songs ever. It's a good karaoke song. I'm not drunk enough to sing it right now, but I'm not drunk at all. I haven't drank actually a sip of alcohol and, uh, Two months. Oh, no, I lied. I had a beer at, at a poker game like three weeks ago. But um, yeah, besides that, I haven't had a sip of alcohol three or four months. I don't drink a lot. I'm not a big drinker. I just have one every once in a while if I'm having fun. But that's, that's besides the point. We're here to report the news. Imagine if your news anchor did that. You're watching like Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson or like Rachel Maddow and she just talks about like drinking at a poker game. That would be hilarious. But um. Anyway, first story of the day, we're just going to listen to the clip. Um, Bill Barr talked about the Durham report. A lot of people have been talking about it. You've had people, you know, Trump supporters and uh, Trump himself has been tweeting Obamagate. It's been a big thing, but let's listen to what Bill Barr here says, and then we'll talk about it. Hopefully you guys can hear this. I'm going to play it from my computer. Now, I have a general idea of how Mr. Durham's investigation is going. And as I have indicated, some aspects of the matter are being examined as potential crimes. But we have to bear in mind what the Supreme Court recently reminded us of in the Bridgegate case. As the court said there, there's a difference between an abuse of power and a federal crime. Not every abuse of power, no matter how outrageous, is necessarily a federal crime. Now, as to President Obama and Vice President Biden, whatever their level of involvement, based on the information I have today, I don't expect Mr. Durham's work will lead to a criminal investigation of either man. Our concern over potential criminality is focused on others. So what he's basically saying is, I mean, we'll see, but it sounds like nothing's going to happen to Biden and Obama, which I never really thought was going to happen in the first place. There's other people, Comey, Brandon, Strzok, Page. So this isn't the end of investigating people involved with Russiagate, but I would think it's pretty much close to the end of uh, people believing Obama himself is going to get arrested or prosecuted. Bill Barr himself pretty much saying it's not going to happen. But the interesting thing about it is, and I'm not trying to be a downer, I still, it's so, fu it's funny to me, I have to laugh, because if I don't laugh, I just get annoyed, and I went through a phase of that, 2 a.m., I'm on Twitter just getting annoyed, I'm like, I can't do this anymore, so I just laugh at it, and then I laugh at it, and I'm getting messages, people are like, Anomaly, how dare you laugh at me, how dare, I'm like, guys, either I laugh or I cry, so just let me laugh, let me watch funny videos, uh, and then we'll move on, but um, I still see people believing that Obama is going to get arrested, and the theories are just pretty funny to me. I'm sorry, but I have to laugh. Um, 
people are like, no, Obama, they're like, no, Obama gate is deeper than that. It's been since 2013. So one, we're going to go through all of them and then I'm going to say what I think. But the one theory is Obama gate has been a thing since 2013. So they're investigating him since 2013. And somehow that's a, a beacon of hope for them that they investigated him three years during his presidency. Didn't do anything. President Trump won three years of investigation, didn't do anything. 2020, we're locked up, Hillary's not locked up, Obama's locked up, the entire country is basically on house arrest and didn't even do anything besides existed. And then Bill Barr himself, who they've been saying, trust Bill Barr, he's gonna get Obama for three years, now is pretty much saying Obama's not gonna get got. But people are like, no, 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 we, it's been eight years in the making. And I'm like, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, you think they were going for Obama during his presidency? If they did, it didn't work. It, Anyway, and then I read something, and I'm not, I'm not joking, guys. This had 18,000 or 15,000 retweets. I'm, I'm talking massive engagement on a level like I've never seen on Twitter, besides like Trump's Twitter. And this guy is saying, trust me, guys, uh, this has been happening for 27 years or 18 years. This is a fight in the making between the military and these people. And I'm like, guys, 19 years, 18 years? You're talking about Obama, Bush, you know, uh, Trump, so you think that this is a good sign that it's been happening for 18 years, but nothing got done, but just because Bill Barr said it, now you secret, like, the, the theories just keep piling up. People don't want to believe that Obama and thousands of people aren't going to get arrested, um, but anything is possible. I'm not ruling it out. I just think it's hilarious that this game never ends for some people. It's like they just want to, you know, think it's going to happen and nothing else can ever prove them otherwise. And my thought has always been this, when it comes to President Trump, I think he's maybe doing what he can, maybe he's gonna do a lot, maybe he won't, but I just don't get, I don't get excited about politicians. I've seen some disgusting stuff, guys. I've, I've read stories about like wealthy people's kids, like raping kids, like disgusting sick stuff, and they get a slap on the wrist and they go to like community service or a, a rehab center. So I just haven't seen a U.S. politician ever get held accountable for anything. Hillary, they're changing the wording of it, you know, uh, emails, whatever. I'm not saying it's not real. I call it the dangling carrot, and then people don't understand what I mean. They say, what do you mean Obama Gates real? It's not a dangling carrot. That's not what the dangling carrot means. The dangling carrot means it is real. The carrot's real. What's not real is you ever getting there. It's like dangling in front of a horse, and the horse runs, and you're just running forever. They did that with Russia Gate. For two years, uh, you know, Democrats thought that uh, Trump was going to get arrested because they want to believe that. That's what they want to be true. So they ignore everything else. They ignore reality. They ignore logic, reason, critical thinking, and they just listen to Rachel Maddow because they want that to be true. And then at the end of Russia Gate, what happened? Nothing happened. So it there's no really. Uh, there's no advantage really to lying to yourself to tell yourself that what you think is gonna happen is gonna happen. Now on the Obama gay side, me personally, I think Obama gate is way more credible than Russia gate. I think there's a lot more evidence there. However, the dangling carrot is you for three years saying it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Trump's gonna do it. The federal government's gonna save me even though I'm a libertarian. And then you just keep moving the goalposts. It's a never ending move of the goalposts. Trust Sessions, he's gonna do it. If Sessions gets out, we'll trust Barr. Trust Gowdy, then Gowdy doesn't do it. We'll trust Barr. Barr says he's not gonna do it, but he's still gonna do it. Now the theory is because Bill Barr's not gonna prosecute Obama, they think the military's gonna do it in a secret tribunal or it already happened. It's a never ending game of trying to pretend what you want to happen is always happening. And that's the reason I didn't like the whole movement in the first place. It's not, I like the fact that they're looking into human trafficking. I like the fact that they're diving into deep topics that people won't cover. That's all fine with me. What I don't like is the inconsistency and the inaccuracy and the cognitive dissonance of playing a game of always pretending every day what you want to happen is happening even when it's not happening. You find a way, you make a puzzle in your mind to tie it to something it's exhausting and quite frankly, it's kind of weird. Uh, that's why I laugh because if I don't laugh, I just get annoyed. And there have been really big influencers that are big in the Trump Q movement that have tried to say I'm like a paid person because I said, why are you cheering on the lockdown? And not everybody, I don't wanna, there's good people all over the place, you know, good liberals, good conservatives, good people who follow that stuff, people who are losing their mind or following that stuff. It exists in every group, so I'm not trying to smear anyone. But the truth is I've had big influencers in these movements 
literally start attacking me because I said, I don't think this lockdown's good. I think they're taking away our freedom. I think they're taking jobs away, ruining the economy. And for a month, they were telling their audience that this lockdown was really a good thing because they thought that Trump was using this lockdown to go arrest people. This is how delusional some of these people are. And they still attack me to this day, even though now they copy what I said two months ago. Every video I made two months ago still stands because I don't lie. Everything they said two months ago doesn't exist anymore because they realized it wasn't true. That's the problem. So when it comes to people getting held accountable, I want to believe that thousands of people are going to get held accountable. I just don't really see the evidence. And now with Bill Barr saying that, maybe they'll charge Comey and Brennan with stuff. But even if they locked them up or, or prosecuted them, I would be blown away. I would be like, wow, that's huge. What's much more likely, unfortunately, I think, is uh, them just giving them a slap on the wrist and saying we can't do anything. And um, Overall, I think the, the silver lining to me and the, the part that I don't agree with with the, the QAnoners and stuff that freak out at me all the time is to me having hope and faith is having hope and faith in God, having hope and faith that life is a rocky road and we'll all figure it out. That's where I get my hope and faith. I'm not a doomer and a gloomer. I'm optimistic. My faith is in God. If you're unreligious, that's fine. I'm not trying to preach to you, but just have faith in yourself and have faith in life that everything's going to work out. That's hope and faith. To me, hope and faith was never big government, having hope and faith in big government, having hope and faith in politicians, having hope and faith in the Republican Party. To me, that's not hope and faith. That's these people who are mostly Christians conflating their Christianity with something that a message board posted on three years ago because they don't like Obama and they want him to get arrested. And I'll say this too with, with anything, regardless, whether it's Trump, whether it's these people, whether it's anybody, Obama is not the root of all corruption. He's just, in my personal perspective, he's just a puppet. You know, George Bush, Clinton, Obama. Did Obama orchestrate everything? Did Obama create the Federal Reserve and go back in time and, you know, create the dual party system and start every war? And it's not Obama, guys. Obama was just another puppet of, you know, the real people who have a lot more influence on the world. And that goes for a lot of things, you know, not just banking, but you know, there's a lot of powerful people in the on the planet who have more power than the politicians. And you can see that on a local level. Why do they stand up for big pharma and weapons contractors all the time? Look at the lobbying money. They talk about the NRA. The NRA is paying people. That's chump change compared to what big pharma and the weapons industry is paying people. That's just a fact. So when it comes to Obama, I'm not a fan of Obama. I think he was corrupt. I think he was disingenuous. I think he did certain things that were not right. I do think, it, to be honest, that the Obamagate situation, whatever they want to call it, with you know people in the intelligence communities and others and political parties trying to really prevent and stop Trump from getting there, I think it's real. But this idea that like we're going to arrest Obama and thousands of people and it all starts with him, it doesn't start with Obama, just like it doesn't start with Trump. You know That's why when I disagree with Trump, I'm not blaming him for all the world's problems, but at a certain point, I think the silver lining of this stuff is have faith in yourself. If you're religious, have faith in God. And that's the faith. Having faith in political parties, politicians, anonymous posters, and uh, you know the Republican Party is going to lead you to disappointment or Bill Barr because you know they might do something, they might not. But overall, I don't know. I just think it's funny that this, this game never ends. Um, but they still could hold some people accountable. You know, it's a possibility. Uh, it's definitely a possibility that Bill Barr drops the hammer on, on a few people involved, but he pretty much just said he's not going to do it on Obama. And Obamagate is called Obamagate because they're trying to say that it all started with Obama, which of course, to be honest, whether Trump says or not, it didn't start with Obama. He's definitely a kingpin in that you know whole situation. But it's like even Hillary Clinton, she's got a lot of power. She, you know, she has a lot of influence, Joe Biden. But I don't even think Hillary Clinton's that high up on the totem pole, to be quite honest. I just think she's high up in her arena but on a, on, a, on a worldwide scale, I still think she's pretty low level. But once again, I'm not defending her or Obama. I can't stand either of them. I think they're both corrupt. But I'm just being honest. And uh, that's the first story uh, is Bill Barr basically says he's probably not going to look into Obama and Biden. And I, I want to, before I move on to the next one, I want to end with this too. I don't, I don't hate, I don't stop, I don't smear, I don't censor. So don't misconstrue what I'm saying. If you do good research... I'm your friend. If you tell the truth, I'm your friend. If you do great work, even if it disagrees with what I, I do, I love it. I love people who do great work. What I don't like is complacent Republicans and libertarians 
who all of a sudden become like communists and fascists because they think that Trump has a secret plan. And that's what a lot of these people who are, were doing who said trust Barr. They tried to use their influence to tell people I'm a bad person and I'm paid off when I'm literally not. I'm one of the only newscasters that's 100% independent. I literally run the stuff, film the stuff. I'm as independent as it could possibly get. That's a fact. And I know that because I'm myself. They don't know me. So all they could do is lie and make speculation. So I can't tell you everything, but there is one thing that I do know. It's what I do. And they don't know because they don't. They, most of these people haven't even ever met me. But anyway, point I'm trying to get to is they've told people for a long time to not do anything but just cheerlead the president and yell at everybody else. And it's, it's just not right because when it comes to H-1B visas, what helps American workers is, is Republicans and Libertarians standing up for what's right. When it comes to Republicans and Democrats, bipartisan trillion dollar spending bills and selling out the American public, it's going to take Republicans, Libertarians, Independents and Democrats to stand up and say enough is enough. And when it comes to the shutdown, the lockdown, the fake numbers, the fake data, Operation Warp Speed, you know, whatever's going on, Fauci, Burks, whatever you want to say. It's going to take libertarians and, and Republicans saying enough is enough. You know, this is wrong. Here's what's right. And that's totally okay to do. So they hate when people call out the president. They hate when people disagree with them. They hate anybody, not, not all the people, but a lot of these big influencers. They always want to attack anybody who doesn't play their games all the time. And the games are going to come to an end at some point, but they're not going to come to an end because it's a goalpost that's open wide. Just like the Democrats when they say, oh, Phase three is when we want it to be. If there's no goalposts, if the goalpost can extend to, you know, if it happens in public, it happened. If it didn't happen in public, there's secret military tribunals and only me and, you know, my friends can see it. Uh, but overall, before I move on, if you really, really think, take your emotion out of it, take what you want to believe out of it, take the good stuff out of it, take the bad stuff. It's all, you know, there's good, there's bad, whatever. If you really think about it, the whole idea is kind of outlandish to begin with. Because these people on the message board, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to smear you, I'm just being honest. Their whole ideology was this is all happening secretly and you, you know they don't want to really fully tell you because it's happening in secret and we're getting secret intel. But guys, they don't need to tell you secret intel. It's not secret if they tell you and you talk about it on Twitter, Instagram and people's you know Facebooks every day. It's not secret at that point. And if it was super secret, they wouldn't want you talking about it on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook every day. That totally defeats the part of secret. So the whole, you know, the whole I idea of it really never made sense. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, I thought Trump was cool. Yeah, I wanted him to do stuff. Yeah, I thought he was going to crack down on corruption. But this idea that they need to tell you on a message board everything that they're doing, but you're so smart that you can figure it out, but it's so secret that Ellen, John Podesta, and Obama can't figure it out. It never, it literally never made sense. And I, I had debates and discussions with people. I said, I agree with you there. I disagree with you. It's, it's just kind of funny, to be honest. So as this goes on, I think the things that people should take out of it or take the good out of it is... uh. You know, take the research, do the deep dives, learn the information. A lot of people have awoken. They've broken the spell of liberal lies and mainstream media lies. They understand that there's deep corruption. They understand that, that, that people aren't telling the truth. And all of those aspects of it I love. And I'm glad that people really awoke to, to the real corruption going on and, and a lot of crazy stuff. But however, don't become, you know, one of what you hated on the left, which is closed-minded, cognitive bias, you know, incapability of accepting facts and realities that go against what you want to happen. Just don't become that and it's all good. We'll take it, we'll move on and we'll use these, uh, you know, this big movement for good. But, uh, you know, to each their own, whatever, whatever you guys want to do. But that's just my thought as this kind of, you know, eventually will get to a point. These are, these are things that I don't even say much because those people freak out the most at me whenever I question Trump or question Operation Warp Speed. But Bill Barr saying he's not going to arrest Obama, I would think that's going to be a pretty big blow. And uh, we'll see, though. You know, Comey, Brandon Strzok, there's always the capability. But personally, I think the revolution is going to come from the people. And it's going to come from Republicans holding their ground, standing up for what's right. The First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Constitution, you know, Americana stuff. Stand up for it yourself. Don't wait for big government, Bill Barr, Donald Trump, Don Jr., Nancy Pelosi. It doesn't matter. Don't don't idolize big government. Don't idolize politicians. Don't idolize businessmen. Take, you know, your God-given life and, uh, you know, stand up for yourself and, and hold our ground. I don't like this complacency. We have to worship him no matter what he says. I like holding my ground, and I think Trump likes it too. 
All right, someone said question everything, exactly. But don't just question everything except for questioning us. If you, it's like, it, it's, it's maddening, but interesting stuff, that's, that's the story. Second thing I wanna talk about real quick is uh, Gavin Newsom changed his tune, and I think if you're in California or you're in a blue state, this is the optimistic angle that I'm going with because I think it's true. Uh, you know, he said he's going to open sports teams and sports games with no fans, but as early as June. And he was talking about delaying it much longer earlier this year. He was like, I don't know if we're ever going to start. I don't know if we could start this year. He said stuff along those lines. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but he was in no rush to start until recently. So why would he start sports games now? It comes down to uh, business and the fact that the United States are very similar, but at the same time, very different. If he doesn't open for the Chargers, the Rams, or whoever you know, whoever's playing in in uh, California, uh, the Angels, the you know, the Dodgers, they could go to Florida, they could go to Arizona. These Republicans are saying, "Hey, you could." DeSantis said, "You could play here if they're not letting you play in California." So they would take their business, they take their money, and they might even take their sports teams. You know, uh, and uh, that doesn't work. And that's why a lot of liberal policies and ideologies. I'm not trying to pick sides. There's dumb Republican policies too. But a lot of liberal and Democrat policies don't actually work, so they eventually have to change or else they lose all the money, they lose all the power, they lose all the businesses, and then they go somewhere. And the good people who clean up the street and don't just trash the street and have like, you know, they're like rah, 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 eating. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I dropped my light. Hold on a second. Very unprofessional. Sorry about that, guys. But, uh, you know, people who eat trash, it's like eventually that's going to wear off. And... Uh, it kind of, you saw that in New York. I don't know if it was de Blasio or Cuomo. I think it was de Blasio. But you had a lot of these progressives. Um, they really want to raise taxes on the wealthy, um, which in theory is a good idea, right? I'm not that wealthy. Jeff Bezos is really wealthy. Uh, Bill Gates is really wealthy. Let's take their money, but here's the problem, and give it to the federal government. I don't want Jeff Bezos to have that much money. I certainly don't want Bill Gates to have that much money, but... I don't think that giving that money to the federal government's gonna do anything. First of all, a lot of it's just a circle, circular motion anyway between you know federal government and, and big, big wealthy people. However, I mean, dude, the government could waste that money in a week. They, you know, Bezos and Gates combine their money, the government just created it out of thin air and they'll waste trillions of dollars every year. So the idea of progressivism is take money away from the wealthy and it's gonna make our, but, it's not how it works. And also the, the big point that they missed in California and New York is most of the taxes are paid or a big chunk of the taxes are paid by the wealthy. You get what I'm saying? A lot of money, pay a lot of taxes. Some people avoid taxes, some companies avoid taxes, but de Blasio knows where the money's coming from. So if you chase away the Elon Musks and the you know Jeff Bezos is out of your state, they're gonna go somewhere else and pay their taxes somewhere else. And if they don't pay taxes, other billionaires and millionaires do. Trust me, once you hit a certain bracket, you're paying under a Democrat 40 to 50% taxes, under a Republican, you know, 20 to 40% taxes. It's a lot of money. Even if you're just a millionaire, you don't have to be a Bill Gates. You run a small business, it's disgusting paying that much money. I don't make that much, but I'm saying it probably feels gross. I feel gross when I have to give thousands to the government. I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. Like, it's not like I'm giving it to a charity, I'm giving it to the federal government. It's not a good thing. But anyway, you get what I'm saying? The whole liberal ideology doesn't work. So the good point about it is California, New Jersey, New York, one of two things are going to happen. Either they're going to screw up completely and lose all the business to red states, or they're going to turn like they're doing in California and actually start doing the right thing, or they're going to get kicked out of office or both. When Elon Musk says, I'm going to go to Texas, they know how important Elon Musk is, not only to the culture, but to jobs and the economy. So they don't want him to leave. And same with, you know, all these billionaires. So that's the good news about blue states is if they get crazy, even with vaccines, you know, people are worried about them saying you can't go here without it. The good thing about the free country or the somewhat free country, if it gets to that point, and they say, you can't go to the diner or the sports game without a testing certificate or something. You can go to Arizona. You can go to Texas. You can go to Florida. So that's the good news is uh, it's all going to work itself out, I think, one way or the other. People, wherever you are, you know, go to where you want to be. If you want to leave, leave. If you want to stay, stay. But it's going to take people really standing up. And you see that in, in New York and California, too. I would imagine that what Newsom and Cuomo and uh, 
de Blasio are doing is going to make a lot of people vote right wing. And I've read a lot of comments like, I'm independent. I didn't vote for Trump, but I'm going to vote for him again. I've, I've got messages from liberals who said I watched these documentaries and they made me look at Trump in a good light. That's where I come back to what I was talking about in the last segment. And I say there are good and bad. I'm not a, I'm not a liar. And that's why people actually like me and listen to me because some people, if they don't like you, they're emotional. I hate you. You're a paid agent. You're a liar. You're the, it's like, no, people watch my videos. They've seen the work I do. They're not going to believe you because it's obvious. But anyway, you get what I'm saying? There's pros and cons to everything. You can't just be black. Everything's not black and white. So with the movement before, they've created millions of people who've left the liberal lies and now look at Trump in a different light. However, now you don't want to get trapped in thinking Trump is the new messiah because there's a chance he could start being sneaky and do stuff. Even all the Republicans love Reagan. You know, I'm sure Reagan was a cool, nice guy and he did good stuff, but he also did really sneaky stuff, you know? And that's that's obvious on multiple levels. So you don't want to get you don't want to leave the left to get trapped on the right. You want to stay open minded. But I do think that California has a good chance of going red. I think Orange County is going to fly back Republican. Uh, I think a lot of other areas, they're going to tilt the scales a little bit more. And uh, we'll see. And, and it doesn't mean that the Republicans are going to save us or Trump's going to save us. But I do think people realize what I'm realizing because everyone says, why are you going to vote for him since you're calling him out? Why would you vote red uh, if, if you feel that Republicans are phony? Here's the thing. We only have two options. Libertarian Party sucks. Green Party's pretty weak. Um, but with Republicans, Arizona, Texas, Florida, Georgia, look where look where business is more open. Look where they allow more freedom. It's all those states. Look where taxes are lower. Property taxes. They don't gouge you with businesses. So Although I've lived in blue states almost my whole life, and I may continue to, and just try to be a part of the, you know, the change rather than just run all the time. But uh, you know, that's the that's why I, I lean red. It's not that I think they're perfect. I just think the revolution is going to come through the right wing. I think Trump is easier to hold accountable than than Democrats or George Bush, and I think Republicans are easier to shift towards the right direction than Democrats at this point. They're going too far. They shut down. They raise taxes too much. They sh the business. Everything they're doing to me is just jumbled, jumbled backwards. And, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, there's nothing really for me there. So that's the good news about what Newsom is doing. Although he's doing some other sneaky stuff, eventually, you know, the, the cows are going to come home to roost or the chicken. What's the saying? Something about something coming home to roost. Reality sets in. Either everyone's going to leave. Either businesses are going to leave. It was already happening before COVID-19. And, uh, you know, they're going to move to nicer parts of the state or they're going to move to another city and then you're going to lose businesses taxes money jobs it's not going to work out so either they're going to do what he did with the sports teams and change their minds so someone else doesn't steal their business or they're going to lose and that's the beautiful thing so don't worry guys don't buy into the fear even if they go crazy with the medical tyranny we'll have a chance to either leave or be part of the revolution so that's what i'm sticking with today third thing i want to talk about this is really creepy uh really really creepy Mayor de Blasio of New York City said that anybody, this is a quote apparently from his press briefing, it's being reported in multiple news sources, anyone tries to get in the water, they will be taken right out of the water, said the mayor at a press briefing on Monday. Though beaches in New York City have been partially reopened, uh, people are still required to adhere to social distancing. So he doesn't, he wants you to go to the beach and do social distancing, but he doesn't want you to get in the water. Just the optics of that are just awful. And I would like to know the science behind, you know, sunlight, water. Is it that much? What's better, being in the water, the ocean, in the sun, or being in Costco with 100 people? I'd love to see a study to see, you know, which one is more healthy for you and then go from there. But they don't like to study the science behind fear, the science behind not working out and, you know, keeping people in multi-generational homes or not putting COVID-19 infected people in a nursing home. They don't look at that science. They just say, me, me, I do this. I ain't telling you when to do this. And it's just creepy. I was saying on Twitter, I want to see like 10,000 Hasidic Jewish uh, New York Cityans go to the beach and go in the, go in the ocean. One, I think it would be funny to watch, but also the optics of de Blasio trying to take them out would not look good. And uh, they seem to not care what he says anyway. There's like a, they went to a funeral. There were like hundreds of them in the streets. Uh, the Hasidic Jews do not listen to de Blasio. And I respect them for that. I like that they don't uh, listen. I don't know. I think it's... Uh, rebellious. I don't know why they're doing it, but I always see them. It's like, he's like, hey, Jewish people, get out of the streets. And you just see them with the curls. They got the hats on. They're wearing all black. There's hundreds of them. They're looking like, we're not listening to you. 
which I think is hilarious. So I would love to see a huge Hasidic Jewish beach party at the beach uh, just for my own personal entertainment and for, you know, New York. I think that would be a fun vibe. But uh, jokes aside, you know, anyone who tries to get in the water will be taken out of the water. What does de Blasio think that's going to do to voters? I mean, even Democrat and liberal voters, they want to use the ocean eventually. They don't want it like the lockdown was cool for a week, a month. People are getting quiet about it. Like I reported yesterday, Colorado, which I believe is a blue state. You got to check it, though. Uh, they're rearranging the death toll. New York, everybody knows now, unless they live under a rock, that, um, you know, New York put COVID-19 infected people into nursing homes, and they've had very suspect uh, policies throughout this whole thing. They only get away with it because they're a Democrat, and the, the governor's brother works for CNN, so they have the whole, like, media liberal connection thing going on. And, uh, you know, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, Trevor, Al Noah, Trevor Noah, John Oliver, Seth Meyers, all these people, they're funny. They're funny guys. Trevor Noah's not funny, but the rest of them, John Oliver's a funny guy. Trevor Noah's not funny. Jimmy Fallon's funny. S Jimmy Kimmel's kind of annoying, but he could be funny. But the point, I, Stephen Colbert's funny, but he's kind of smug. The point I'm getting to is they don't talk, they're Democrat puppets. They don't, they don't make jokes about things that they don't make jokes about. It's all like Trump, Russia, gay, collusion. Like it's the same story on loop. So if only we could move that into culture. But uh, that's the story. I guess I have one more and then I'll a ask questions um, or I'll answer questions. Last story I want to talk about real quick is two heavily censored people, regardless of what you think of them, love them, hate them, agree with them, disagree with them. Judy Mikovits and David Icke uh, were censored very heavily on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, recently, both of them had their websites hacked. It looked like uh, Judy Mikovits was hacked by some sort of you know, I, who knows, it, who, it could be anybody, but basically they were debunking her on her own website and saying she was lying, and then David Icke was hacked, and it, it raises suspicion of who, was it activists, was it some sort of hacker group, or was it like agencies of some sort that are just trying to shut them down? I, I'm not saying it is, it could be anybody, but this is a problem for me, because uh, in general, I don't believe in social media censorship unless it's like crazy violence or threats or something, but they, they get censor happy with David Icke and Judy Mikovits. What I want to see is two things. One, I want to see a David Icke debate. I don't agree with everything that David Icke says, but at the same time, I don't agree with everything that Rachel Maddow says. I think David Icke could probably beat Rachel Maddow in a debate. Does it mean I agree with David Icke completely? No, I, I just don't think you know, Rachel Maddow and Don Lemon are really that bright or honest. That's just a testament to how good they are at their job. That's what I think. We could watch it and see. It would be a great debate. But it's like they give themselves the moral high ground where when they make mistakes, it's okay. But if independent journalists make mistakes, they need to get deleted off the internet or whatever. But the point I'm getting to is, one, if you're going to censor all these people, let Judy Mikovits debate Dr. Fauci. Let David Icke debate Rachel Maddow. How fun would that be? It's like re wrestling. You know what I'm saying? I would love that. That would sell more than Rachel Maddow sells or any. It would be the biggest show on television. But uh, besides that, when they get deleted off of social media, then when they get their website hacked, it gets creepy because it does seem like an effort to just delete them off of everything. And you can't even have, you have your own little space and they want to get rid of that too. I don't know who's doing that. I'm just saying it's suspicious. And overall, uh, I was talking to or, or looking at what, what's it called? Gab. I don't use Gab, I never have, just personally, I never signed up. But the Gab owner was basically saying, he's been deleted out of the app store, and I didn't even realize that, but Gab was like a social media app, and then they deleted it out of the app store. So that's what they do to competitors. It's not even like they just delete you off of social media sometimes, but sometimes they'll even get you out of the app store. You know, it's like how far are certain people going? I'm not sure, but it is suspicious. And they do, you know, something I can prove is they do do that with application stores and such as well. So that's the story of the day. Let me know uh, what you guys think, and then I'll hang out for a little bit and answer some questions. Yeah, the guy London Real is getting censored pretty much too. Someone said, nice picture behind you. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dixie. What are my opinions on HR 748? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. HR 748. I'm not. Oh, the CARES Act. Yeah, uh, that's a good question because this is this is something that's getting passed around. And I, I someone said weak feed. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with the feed. Uh, some people it's weak for. Some people it's probably strong for. But uh, all right, HR 748 was a CARES Act. 
And uh, you know, that's the big trillion dollar, I believe, thing that they spent. I'm not sure if that's true, but the CARES Act, is that where they gave everyone all the money or whatever? The thing that people are talking about, they've been talking about it for months, but it's been circulating recently, is the bill itself was around since uh, 2019, and it was the Coronavirus uh, Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, which there's two options for this, and I'm not sure, I'm not big into like political legislation, um, but sometimes they use the skeleton of another bill to make a bill. So when they wanted to do the CARES Act, they already had a 2019 bill that had you know, some of the information in it and they just use that for the coronavirus. So there's, you know, it is sketchy. I do agree that it is kind of sketchy that they started working on, you know, part of the CARES Act in 2019, but a likely option is they just use the skeleton of a bill that was already there so they could save time. Or it, it's sneaky. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for it, but I think that would be the explanation for why, if it was uh, not as creepy as everybody thinks that they were already working on it. But I don't know. I don't know that much about like po political legislation, but th once again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. This is the difference. This is why people tune in. You know, a lot of people, everyone's got their opinion. Most people are fine, but this is why people tune in and why people trust me because trust is earned. It's not given and it's not like a cult where I make everybody like me and no one can disagree with me. I'll tell you what I know and I'll tell you what it might be. I could easily just say, they started CARES Act in 2019, guys. It's a theory that they already knew about it. And I'm not, there's other things that are going on. But you get what I'm saying? It could be them just using the skeleton of a bill, but I don't think there's many people on the right or in general that would even admit that or think about that because they're just ready to be, you know, I think that's the, the value here is we keep, it is sneaky though, I agree. It, I mean, I would have to look into, and you guys got to look into, what uh you know what parts of it from the 2019 bill they kept and what parts of it that they didn't keep i just didn't have the time to read all this stuff but i don't i don't know and probably talking to like people in politics would help too someone said we could be under the rule of the ccc ccp at this point it's possible but i think the interesting thing too is uh even with Democrats, Republicans, Trump people, a lot of people don't want to think that things are happening that aren't happening. So when it comes to America, I'm not trying to start theories or whatever, but I mean, you look at America, you look at the history of America, you look at the Federal Reserve, you look at lobbying, you look at, you know, who really has a lot of influence in the country. And the narrative you're hearing from most people is just nowhere near what it really is. So as far as the CCP and China, does China have a lot of power in America? Absolutely. You know, on universities, they do stuff. Uh, in the real estate market, they buy a lot of stuff. In the film industry, they have uh, power, uh, you know, all over the place. In media, it seems like media likes to side with them. A lot of these billionaires are globalization-minded people, so they you know, work with China just as much, if not more, than the U.S. and favor China, World Health Organization. That's all real, but it's not just China. I think that's the false matrix that Republicans get trapped in. They're like, it's America versus China, and that's not really true. I mean, I think the Democrats are definitely you know, involved with some China stuff, but there's so many other players going on here and bigger players that even Republicans are sold out to that uh you know the, the full story really never gets told so when it comes to foreign countries and money and power and stuff there's there's many more people involved in america than china and i would say at this point it's safe to say that uh a lot of politicians are absolutely you know compromised or just totally not america first i mean at this point they've shifted the culture so much that the democratic party is like America last. And I'm not saying that to be biased. I mean, they're, they want to build a wall or build a fence on the beach before they build one on the border. Like that doesn't even make sense. Even Obama and Chuck Schumer from five years, like it's so far gone that it's like they're doing everything wrong. It's creepy. On the right wing though, people think it's like America versus the Democrats, but it's really not. Most of them, uh, most Republican politicians are not even America first, it's like America second. A lot of them are Zionist first and Zionism first, which is the movement to create what is now, you know, or was and now is Israel. 
Uh, and they prioritize that over, you know, America stuff. Uh, I think that's just true. Where it's, I think Americans get a better shake under Republicans, but I don't think that their sole goal is just, you know, working for America. I think it's kind of like a, a fusion at this point where they have, you know, ulterior motives and agendas that supersede what's in the best interest for America and Americans. And uh, that's the story that does not get told very often on the right wing, because if you tell that story, you're most likely blacklisted, banned, censored, or lied about uh, in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, that's only one surface of it. But we can go on and on about that for days, but maybe another time. Uh, would I ever vote... A would I ever devote a live stream to my theological worldview? I'd like that discussion. Uh, that's a possibility. We've mentioned it a few times here, how I feel currently. And, uh, you know, I've, I've talked in one stream kind of about my history of growing up. And uh, I kind of went through phases of different rebellion and such. But I, we've talked about it once on here. We could do it another time if enough people want to. Can I follow you on Twitter? Possibly. Someone said, why are you live? Trump lit up reporters today. I don't know what that means. Was lit on by the reporters today. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Why am I live? I don't know. It's my channel. I have a cell phone. Why? Why wouldn't I be? Someone said a better shake under Republicans. Where have you been keeping your head? I don't know what that means. You gotta explain yourself. Someone said, "Is it because they don't want to be called anti-Semitic?" Well, I mean, there's different traps, I think, on different sides. For instance, if you're right wing and you talk about border security, they try to say that you're racist, even if you're Hispanic, they don't care. So, you know, there's traps. If you're right wing, you talk about that, they'll just say you're racist. If you have a nuanced view about women or you're like a traditional Christian or something, they'll call you sexist. If you talk about the differences between cultures that exist in the Christian world and in the Islamic world, they'll call you xenophobic or Islamophobic or whatever and uh, you know if you talk about Israel or any anything involved with Judaism that is not like to the books exactly what they want you to say they'll call you anti-semitic so I think absolutely people people on all sides of politics are probably afraid of being labeled certain things because all those words are really um, overused at this point and used for censorship you know uh, political correctness is at an all-time high and I think Republicans are slightly better than Democrats at rejecting political correctness, but a lot of it's just a talking point for a lot of these right-wing organizations, unfortunately. They tell you how much they reject political correctness, but what they do is reject political correctness that they don't agree with, and they accept political correctness that they do agree with, which of course is not true political correctness rejection. Just like being pro-free speech, you can't be pro-free speech if you only like speech you agree with. That's the problem that we have with the left wing. They say they're pro-free speech, but then they only want you to agree with them. Same with the right wing. The, the, that's why I call these people out. It's not because I'm jealous or I want money or something. Like That's not why I do it. I do it because it's the right thing to do. Their whole ideology, a lot of these big like campus conservatives, they make millions of dollars and make a living telling you they're standing up for free speech, but behind closed doors, they're not. They, uh, they only agree with speech that they agree with, which is the opposite of free speech, so that's why I say it. You guys get it, though. We got a smart audience here. What do I think about Italy looking into the Bill Gates stuff? I thought it was I thought it was awesome, honestly. I, I mean, I, I don't know that I'm not co-signing everything she said. She's an individual. Um, but I was like, it's way more interesting than watching C-SPAN. Her, her five-minute rant on Bill Gates, it was definitely fun to watch. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see that there's politicians in the world that are not as complacent as uh, American politicians and they're, they question a lot of stuff, so. Wait, someone said, you gotta go watch Trump from today. Yeah, I'll, ch I'll check it out, I definitely will. I saw his Twitter today, it, look it looks like he changed his tune a little bit. He was talking about freedom, oil, hydroxychloroquine again. So, you know, I'll, I'll check out his interviews from today. I, I felt good when I woke up this morning, so. Someone said, I doubt he's really taking it. Yeah, I'll check it out, but I today he kind of, and this is the thing with him, he'll he'll have to change if enough people care about it, but also I think he he hates television, like he hates when they make fun of him on television or say the wrong thing, 
because he loves television and he loves watching other people. So if you say something smart, he listens. He just watches too much television. Trump needs to watch more like, you know, uh, Facebook videos or something. But overall, he listens. It's just, you know, that's why he complains about the television every day because he watches and he doesn't like it. So it's okay to disagree with him. It's okay to stand up to him. I think that's smart. And I think if he listens, he... he He's more pragmatic and he's more loose, I think, than any president ever. He still has his things, but I think he's much more loose than a Obama or a, a Bush, personally. But Art says, so what do we do? Just have a good day, Art. Have a good day. Have a good week. And enjoy yourself. Try to look for the silver lining. And uh, I say it all the time, but I'll say it again. It's just standing firm. People think being... Uh, complacent Republican or, uh, you know, somebody on either side that just goes along with whatever they do is like the, the thing to do to win. I don't think so. I think just standing your ground with free speech, with the Second Amendment, with the Fourth Amendment, with H-1B visas, with, you know, stuff that you care about, whatever it is, stand firm. Don't just like make excuses and play, be like, oh, they're playing 4D chess. In some ways they are, but in other ways they just don't care about you. You get what I'm saying? If I live in a castle and you live, you know, you clean my dishes. No disrespect, I've been a dishwasher myself for a year. But, uh, if you know, I'm not really, I'm not thinking on your level because I don't have to deal with that stuff. You get what I'm saying? So people think that they're always playing 4D chess. In some cases, they just don't care about you. They're so far detached from your reality. They don't, they're not worried about it. If you own a business, you're talking to business owners. You're not, you know, you're thinking about, how do we keep it in America and make a lot of money? They're not always thinking about the lower wage people. Sometimes they are. So just stand your ground. That's all I think we really have to do. And the rest will work its way out. The way that we lose is if we lose 70% of our country to political correctness, to hypocrisy, to the dual party, like fighting over things that don't matter, and to the complacency putting party lines, politicians, and presidents over God and over truth. You know, I think that's how you lose. So how you win is just... Keep it real. And today, I'll give you another example, uh, if you consider this a win. Um, in, in New Jersey, I believe it was, you had a gym owner who opened, and they called the police on him, and the police came and said, we're supposed to stop you, but basically have a good day and enjoy yourself. Like, the police weren't enforcing it, you know? So that, that gym owner decided, I'm going to be part of the revolution. I'm going to be part of, you know, opening what I want to open. So... You know, there's millions of ways that you can do certain things. You don't have to do that. I'm not suggesting you do because I don't even know if that's allowed on social media anymore. But there's millions of ways you can do on a bigger scale, on a smaller scale. But I think the easiest, simple thing everyone could do is just don't be another, don't, don't, don't prioritize politicians, political speakers, myself, Charlie Kirk. Don't, don't look at us like idols and ignore what you believe in you like me or you like Charlie Kirk or you like Trump because you like the First Amendment, you like the Second Amendment, you like America. That's why you like us. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you don't like any of them. But you get what I'm saying? Don't, don't compromise your values for me or Trump or Charlie Kirk. Stick to what you believe in. If it's free speech, stand up for it. Don't, Because this is what they do in politics. They, they get you involved. This is why you can't worship idols. This is why you can't worship human beings. They get you locked on the person. So now you're locked on the person and then they move the goalposts. They move the person. So Obama, if, if George Bush was bombing Libya, every Democrat would have freaked out. Syria and Libya starting wars and funding rebels. But if Obama did it, they make you love Obama. They make you worship Obama. And then they act like Obama could do no wrong. So they, And the same with Trump. It's the same with Charlie Kirk or whoever. It's like they make you think that these guys are your guy. And then eventually they just do something else and every, no one wants to question it. No one wants to admit that George Bush might not be the best Republican or Mitt Romney or John McCain or even Trump or Kirk. You know, it's, I'm not saying they're bad people, but it's not your job to just follow them off a cliff or follow them down to Operation Warp Speed. If you stand up for what you believe in and if you hold your ground, they will hear you. And I use this example and then we're going to move on. It already happened. Charlie Kirk was up there. I mean, you listen to some of the stuff he says on immigration. He's like a radical leftist when it comes to immigration. He talks a big game about illegal immigration, but there's a clip of him saying he thinks that there should be 50 million new immigrants in the next 10 years. He's like, there's so much space in middle America. We could have 50 million people here. It's like, dude, 
I don't, you know, you don't need everywhere. It doesn't need to be like New York City and Los Angeles. You can have some rural areas. You don't have to jam pack it with legal or illegal immigrants. I'm not, no disrespect. It's like, just calm down, bro. So he started getting challenged by a lot of these right wing kids and Charlie Kirk backed off. He apologized. He said he learned and he switched his, his view on, on immigration. He did it because enough people stood up and said, Charlie, you're wrong. And honestly, I think he was and he knew he was. So he stopped doing that. So that's how you win. That's a simple example. Use it for Trump. Use it for Charlie. Don't accept their nonsense just because you think they're like a special boy. You get what I'm saying? Say no. That's that's not, that's not right. We don't, I, we don't want Idaho to look like Los Angeles. We want Idaho to be I, Idaho. It's okay that there's space. Like a lot of these Republicans, people think, people think that they care about everything they care about. They don't. A lot of them care about money and big business. And it's like they'd put you in an apartment complex with 10,000 people if they could milk it for money. You know, that's the type of a uh, mindset a lot of these Republicans have. They're, they're thinking capitalists like, oh, let's make as much money off these people as possible. That's not how certain things uh, happen. I want to read this. What's... I want to read this. Um, Andrew said every... Thank you, Andrew, for your comment. He said, every opportunity you get to distrust Trump, you jump on it, admit it, come on, objective, I don't think so. All right, so Andrew, if you look at, here's, here's where the cognitive bias comes in. No, no disrespect, I appreciate your comment, that's why I read it. So if you look at my videos, if you look at my videos, there's about, I would say, any video that I've talked about Trump over the last three years, 98% of them, 99% of them, probably more, probably like around 99.5% of my videos are backing Trump, defending him, and supporting him. Probably, I'm not even lying, probably 99.5%. So this is where your cognitive bias comes in. I said two or three things over the past couple months in 10, 20 streams because I didn't agree with what Trump did, and you think that I, I jump on every opportunity to jump down Trump's throat. That's no different from Democrat media saying, the media is too conservative. Uh, the television is too conservative. No, there's Fox News, there's One American News Network, and every other network and station is Democrat. So even if you're a liberal or a progressive, you have to identify and be honest and say, the media is too Democrat. It's not too conservative. You get rid of the conservative, it doesn't exist. So what you want me to do is never question them and be 100% on Trump no matter what. I'm 99% on his side as far as all my videos, and I do it one for one month and you say it's too much. You could lie to yourself all you want, but that's you not being able to accept any sort of critique, criticism, or disagreements with Trump. And me personally, I don't think that's helpful. I think that in, that emboldens corruption. That shows that we the people are nothing. We'll follow you off a cliff. We'll do this. We'll do that. It's people like me. It's people like Michelle Malkin that stand up, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, that like the president but say, I don't agree with you on this. And he listens. He doesn't listen to people who just ride his coattails, but it's a total farce that I, I use every opportunity. I mean, if anything, I'm too biased in Trump's favor. Every, almost every video I've ever done has been backing him because I thought the media was lying. So, I mean, anybody that isn't completely brainwashed knows that that's not true. And the proof is literally in the pudding. It's ridiculous. It's like those type, no offense, buddy, but like those type of Trump supporters, it's becoming a problem. It's like, you know, you'll jump on the opportunity to just, dis you can't question them. You can't, it's like a worship cult. Like what, I've, I've questioned them like three times in like 10 to 20 different videos, possibly over a thousand videos. It's not even close to 50-50. It's like 99% in his favor. It's ridiculous. Someone said, I'm a Trump supporter. I've been critical of him. You should be, guys, because at the end of the day, what people what people who worship Trump, and I'm not saying you can't like him, but they don't even look, they don't understand how banking works. They don't understand how his connections work. and who Like, if you get to the core of what the Republicans and Democrats are doing, I could sit here and lie to you and say that they're going to save the world, but there's a reason that what happened happened. There's a reason for the lockdown, and the ideology that's driving both parties is really communism because on the left wing, it's straight up communism. And on the right wing, they're driven by an ideology that is gonna to lead to communism anyway. So if you don't figure that out, it's gonna happen one way or another. And uh, I'm just the only one who will tell you that. So I said, Trump says he's been taking hydroxychloroquine every day. That's hilarious. I can't wait to watch. 
What do I feel about the Hillary and Obama allegations? I don't know what allegations you're talking about. What, what allegations? People have alleged a lot of things with Hillary and Obama. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Someone said, I love Trump, but I love what you say. Yes, yeah, it's, it's all good. I don't, I don't bash Trump or hate on Trump. I literally just disagreed with him three times. People are like, you, you jump on Trump every chance you get. No, that's the total opposite of the truth. And, and at this point, this last month, it's not like I'm just picking straws and being, oh, Trump is, I'm being over the top. No, guys, the, the economy shut down. He, he let Fauci convince him to shut down the country for 30 days. He's been wildly weak on this stuff. He's, you know, he criticized Georgia for opening up. He's made a lot of wrong moves, but it, you know, it, it is what it is. You could think that he's playing 5G chess. He purposely did the Great Depression, because he, he needs to show you. He needs to show you Fauci to expose him. It's like, guys, it just gets weird, but whatever. Thanks, Brenda. Someone said it's because Republicans hate welfare, but don't understand why minimum wage needs to be raised for welfare to go away. Well, here, here's the thing about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain this, too. Republicans don't like welfare, and like you said, the minimum raise, wage does need to be raised, but there's a way to do it with the free market, and this is where you're right. Republicans don't do it, and nobody besides Tucker Carlson and like four other people say this. Trump said he ran against H-1B visas. He greenlights H-1B visas. Kushner greenlights visas. So the way to raise the minimum wage without being a socialist is to lock out competition, have more jobs available than people, then you have the leverage. You have leverage over Walmart, you have leverage over Amazon. What they do, it's not just illegal immigration, it's legal H-1B visa immigration where they can green light people from other countries to work for a cheaper wage than you. That totally screws up the market, that totally screws over the American worker. So I agree with you, the minimum wage does need to be raised, but there's actually a way to do it with the free market, and Trump doesn't do it, and Republicans don't do it. They lie, and or they just dis say, no, we're not doing it, and that's, that's the dynamic people don't understand. I don't just disagree with them to disagree. It's a fact, it's an economic fact, that if you have more jobs than workers, now you're in demand, I'm, yeah more jobs and workers, you're in demand. You're the, you're the cream of the crop. Amazon needs you. Walmart needs you. The gas station needs you. They don't have options, so they pay you bigger wages. If Trump lets tens of thousands of people come from India to work for $10 less than you, you don't get a higher wage because they don't have to hire you, and that's what they're doing. It's not just Democrats. It's Republicans. Uh, someone said, why, don't, why do you act like you don't know the accusations against Hillary and Obama? You're, keeping, you're not keeping it real now, said Maida. Mido, I asked which allegations. I said there's there's hundreds of allegations against Obama. There's hundreds of allegations against Hillary. So it's not me not keeping it real. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the emails? Are you talking about uh, Benghazi? Are you talking about Obamagate? Are you talking about the Fast and Furious scandal? Are you talking about the human trafficking allegations? Which one are you talking about? There's 30. So I'm tired. I mean, just unfollow me if you're going to be a dishonest liar. It's like Anomaly's not being real because he asked which allegations you're talking about. There's hundreds of allegations against both of them. So if you say, do you agree with the allegations, how am I supposed to know what you're talking about? There's not one allegation against Obama or one allegation against Hillary. There's like 50 against both of them. So I'm tired of the, oh, Anomaly disagrees with Trump too much and, and ask questions about, okay, yeah, I disagree with everything that I don't even know what you're talking about. Be more specific, and that's exactly what I said. People are such, such liars, it's so annoying. All right, Fast and the Furious? Uh, I haven't looked into I haven't looked into Fast and the Furious that much. It was kind of before I really paid attention, but my guess is it's probably true. It probably happened. But Fast and the Furious once again doesn't even scratch the surface. Like this has been happening for decades. Like people, are, Obama did, started it. It's like guys, the United States intelligence communities and government and military. You look, look into decades in the Middle East. Look into how jihadists and Wahhabist Islamists even got power in the first place, guys. They got it from the United States federal government. So this idea that Obama created Fast and Furious and that's the only time America sold weapons to bad people, because the that's like our, the, the entire business. We'll sell them to Saudi Arabia, we'll sell them to these people, we'll, sell, we'll work with these rebel groups, we'll work with these jihadists. That's literally what America does. So that's the point I'm getting to. That's why people watch me, because I don't, Obama started everything. It's like, no, he's just another puppet 
who's doing what American politicians have been doing for decades. So is it true? Probably. Is that the only thing that's true? No. Does any Republican talk about what I just talked about? Pretty much no. So there you go. Someone said Benghazi is all about Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's hundreds of things over that, but nobody talks about them. Someone said, don't waste your time. I'm not, I'm, it's over. All right, we'll, ask, we'll answer a few questions and I'm gonna take off. I had a good time, no, I'm not, I'm not letting, not letting a few bad, bad eggs get me down. Someone said, why does it have to be red, blue, or nothing? It's a trap. It's so easy. It's so simple. You're totally right, Lynn. I have my preferences. I just told people which way I'm probably going to vote, which way I lean. I have a huge preference in one side or the other. But when you're given two options and thousands of things are happening, why do they pass trillion dollar spending bills? Because they're both lying. Why do they both always talk about Venezuela? Why are there certain things that they agree with? Why do they pass the Patriot Act? Why do they do this? Why do they? Why do weapons you know, flow to certain countries no matter who wins? Because it, it's not the be all end all. Anybody who thinks that like one party is, is amazing and you can't question it at all, how anomaly questions Trump too much. Guys, it's so elementary. It's so kindergarten. It's like, I like the Buccaneers and you know, I, I'm going to like them regardless. It's like, that's fine. Like the Buccaneers, but they're not going to win every game, guys. They're not going to win the championship every year. Every year is not a Super Bowl win. And if you say, oh, every they win every, uh, the, the, the Buccaneers are 300 and 0. They've never lost. They won 30 championships straight. It's just not true. So it's like, why people think that they, they're, you can't disagree with a politician? I don't agree with my kids. I don't agree with my wife on anything. I don't agree with my parents on any. I don't agree with anybody on any everything, but I must agree with the Republican Party and Trump. And if you disagree with anything that they ever say in their entire life, then you're just doing too much. It's like, guys, it's so childish. It's, it's so elementary. And it's funny. It doesn't mean I don't have preferences. It doesn't mean I don't like certain people, but it's like, who told you that you had to think that way? I don't, I don't know. It's the same thing as like people who think suggesting nefarious things could quite possibly be happening at all. You're a theorist. How dare you suggest nefarious things happened? I learned in school about Napoleon. I learned about the Native Americans. I learned about the Industrial Revolution. I learned about World War II, about MLK, Malcolm X. I learned about Nazis. I learned about, you know communists and Stalin and all this stuff really happened and millions of people really died and it didn't happen that long ago. But how dare you ever suggest the world is not a perfect bubble of no corruption. You can commit crimes. You could go to jail. You know, people that don't have a lot of money can kill each other and do crazy stuff and rob banks and do this stuff. It's all real. But don't suggest that the people at the top could ever do something wrong. I mean, bankers, get a break, you crazy conspiracy theorists. Obama, come on, give me a break. Trump, the Republicans, the Democrats, the communities, it's crazy to suggest that they could ever do anything wrong. I mean, you have no proof besides like every era ever had this stuff and it happens every single day, but someone just brainwashed me at a university and told me I'm a smart boy with my degree for not thinking that way. It's like, it's so childish. It's like, what? What part of history told you that nothing bad could ever happen? Millions of people died in Nazi Germany and in Russia, but that could never happen again because I have an Apple laptop and a juice box and mommy bought me a new cell phone where I listen to Rihanna on it. It's like, who told you to think this? You know, I listen to Cardi B, so my life is so good. I have Uber Eats, so there could never be another bad person. Every billionaire is a philanthropist and every politician is the same. How dare Trump talk about Obama gay? I mean, who does this guy think he is? I mean, you know, the, the guy's just trying to get by and make Netflix documentaries. It's like, who told... It's so dumb. It's so funny. It's like, that's literally the logic. It's like, <laughs> it would never happen like that. I mean, the United States killed the Native Americans and that was bad. Germany was bad. Russia was bad. I mean, Bayer used to be bad, but they're good. They're no way they could be bad ever before. I mean, nuclear bomb was bad, but that, I mean, that only happened 
not that long ago, but that would never happen again. I mean, what do it's like, guys, who, it's so stupid. I know it's not true, because I use Bing.com. You use Google? You use Google.com? That's a lie. I got Bing. It's Microsoft. Bill Gates, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a... <laughs> I don't care. I'm just having fun. I have to laugh or else people just annoy me. They're like, Anomaly, you're covering up for Obama and Hillary. How dare you not mention the accusations? You know the one. Which accusation, guys? There's hundreds of accusations about them. Name it, and I'll tell you what I think about it. It's like, Anomaly, you question Trump too much. I mean, you only supported him for three and a half years and put out hundreds of videos and sweat and tears and you know thousands of hours worth of editing on your own time to defend the guy and got millions of people to support him and helped Candace Owens and Brandon Straka get blow up and you know they're getting millions of people registered and you know millions of black americans to finally be conservative but how dare you question the trump i'm just going to ignore everything you've done for the movement and for america because you made three videos that question trump and i'm mad because my apple phone said to never <laughs> it's like just leave me alone So I said, I love it when, when we can laugh. Yeah, we have fun here. I'm, I'm funny too. I'm, much, I'm not trying to be biased, but I'm much funnier than Trevor Noah. Now, I'm like, you could never be a movie star. It's like, guys, look at them on a laptop. They're not even funny. Like, Trevor Noah without production, he's not funny. He's got like four writers. I don't even have a pen in my hand. I just made this all up on the spot, and I'm a thousand times funnier than he is. Someone said the trafficking. Here's the thing with the trafficking, guys, and in general. They need proof, or you need proof, or someone. We have evidence, but Bill Barr, Trump, these people need to act on it. These people need to investigate it, but they're not investigating, guys. The Durham report has nothing to do with that stuff. So what do I think about it? I have my suspicions, and to be quite honest, it's a well-known fact that human trafficking is a real industry. It's a real thing. Who's involved? Who's the ringleaders? I have my suspicions like you do. I mean, Epstein went to jail, disappeared, and then, uh, you know, Bill Barr said he found nothing suspicious. So it's up to them, guys. I can't do anything. Like, I don't have any proof or evidence. I don't have a laptop full of video footage or anything. I have the same information you have. I, you know, probably have overlap with a lot of things you think, although I'm probably more accurate than just widely accusing everyone. But at the same time, I can't do anything about it. And neither, you know, it's not like a powerless thing, but someone at, high, at a high level eventually is going to have to look into it and to be honest i don't think that they are you know i don't think that they really care so that's what i think but we'll find out someone said questioning someone said questioning trump and saying we we're falling off a cliff is two different things okay oh yeah fair i'm not i'm not saying everyone who likes trump is following trump off a cliff i'm just saying there's certain things that that's just a metaphor or a simile or whatever it is that I use. Does it mean you're literally going off a cliff and Trump's leading you off a cliff every single time he does everything? No, but with certain topics, like we would make a lot more progress if people just stood up for themselves. I mean, it would, it's real simple. Like, you know, whether it be H-1B visas, the Patriot Act, I mean, there's certain things that no one cares about and they just want to blindly just be like, he, you know, he did that. And a lot of, the, just to be honest, a lot of the whole, as much as people want to credit the message board, a lot of the human trafficking real interest came out of the WikiLeaks by Julian Assange. That's where they started. Trump touted WikiLeaks on his entire campaign. He said WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks a hundred times. And then when he got into office, his administration started prosecuting Julian Assange even harder than the last one. So, you know, you don't care about that because, you know, pe people don't even question that or care. I'm just saying. So I'm not saying he's leading you off a cliff everything he says, but certain issues, I just don't, I don't think worshiping Trump is going to save you. I think liking him and voting for him and thinking he's awesome is fine. You know, I've done it. I do it a lot too. But when he starts talking about Operation Warp Speed and I'm going to check out his stuff today, I think he listens. And I think, honestly, that was very unpopular. And I think he knows that. He's not dumb. He's not like disconnected. 
So if he does something because he thinks it's cool and like 80% of people say no, maybe he'll stop. But if everyone's just like, oh, that's great, then it keeps, that's what I mean by leading off a cliff. I'm not like, people get so, sen- here's, here's what I've noticed too. With any joke I've made or any, anything I say, the people that get the most offended by it are usually the people that are, it, it's accurate to. The Trump supporters who know what I'm talking about usually never get offended. They're like, yeah, that does happen in the movement. You know, it's the same with people who read QAnon and stuff. The people who know what I'm saying is true, they're like, yeah, that is true. You know, that is pretty funny. Or, you know, that could be a possibility. People who think for themselves and don't just blindly follow. The ones who get the most upset when I talk about anything are the people who are exactly what I'm talking about. I go to their profile and it's like, I'm like, oh, that's why they're upset. Because that's, yeah, that's who it is. I'm not saying it's you specifically, but you get what I'm saying? It seems to be a trend when someone, like, if I just said, Trump supporters are all Nazis, like, you know, like, they're like, then yeah, get Pat, be like, no, that's not true. But if I, if I point out something, it's not in the, I'm not like, you know, whoever, like, what's the guy, like, Robert De Niro, like, or Howard Stern, like, you're all trash people. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just being like, don't follow him off a cliff. I don't know. It's okay, we'll get through it. Someone said, Barr is not afraid. I don't think he's a scared guy. It's just, I don't know what he can do. I don't know how much evidence they have and I don't know who's involved. Like, how does this stuff work? You know, when Epstein gets arrested, how does that work? You know, how the first time he got a pretty sweetheart deal. The second time he either died or disappeared. And, uh, you know, how does that, I don't, I'm not saying he's scared, but like, how does it work? Is Trump and Barr 100% trying to weed out the corruption and arrest thousands of people? Maybe, that's a possibility. Are they doing what they can and they don't have enough evidence to really drop the hammer? It's a possibility. And there's also the possibility that uh, they just don't care that much, you know? I think a lot of people might care more than they do, but I don't know, I don't, you know, those are the options. I don't, you could choose which one you think it is. We'll see, time tells all. And that's what I've kind of said uh, the whole time. I'm not, what, what I say too, my opinions and truth or whatever you wanna call it, it has value when it's accurate, it has value when it's funny and you laugh, it has value when it's enlightening. Uh, but my opinion or my theories or my reports on what Barr said, it's not gonna put people in jail. It's not gonna prosecute people. What I say, what QAnon says, what people who follow him say, what Trump says, what uh, anyone says, Tucker Carl, none of it matters. What matters is what they do for that. I'm not talking about for anything, but for that, no one's opinion matters. It's like, keep your eyes on the prize. Same with politicians, they talk a big game. It's what they do that matters. If they say they're gonna do it and they don't do it, it doesn't matter that they said they were gonna do it. I'll give you an example, not to pick on Trump, but I like the guy. He said with the last trillion dollar spending bill two years ago, I'll never sign another bill like this again. And then he signed a bill like that again, didn't say anything for it, started bragging about it, saying we raised the smoking age, blah, blah, blah. So I've seen him before. He sticks to his word, I think, more than most politicians do. I think he's a more honest guy than I've ever seen in Washington. But he's made claims before and then hasn't stuck to it. So this idea that you know just keep your eyes on the prize it's not what he says it's what he does but people like the president because he does what he says he's going to do more than anyone else in washington he's the only president who's ever done a big chunk of what he said he was going to do and that's you know that's his that's the value of trump it's not what he says it's what he does but sometimes it is what he says he's hilarious i mean i like the good the mitt romney and the joe scarborough tweets it's a good time it's fun someone said uh I think Trump might have to take it slow so the powers of, yeah, I mean, listen, it's a crazy world. I mean, he's, at the end of the day, he's doing what he's got to do. And I respect that and I always have. But our job as the people, the only strength that we have is our voice, our actions, and our, you know, strength in numbers. That's all we have. So that's the point I always try to make. At the end of the day, our job is not necessarily to just agree with everything that Republicans or Democrats end up doing. Our job is eventually to be, you know, a power so strong and united that uh, it doesn't matter if it's Trump, Obama, Hillary, you know, the Rothschilds or whoever you want, you know, it doesn't matter. At a certain point, that's the revolution. It's like enough people saying, nah, I reject it. On a voting scale, 
you know, in the elections and also on a broad scale. When the guy, when too many businesses open up, they have no power over you. You get what I'm saying? It's that's that's I think that's kind of how it works. Uh, I'm gonna read this comment because it makes me feel good. Jennifer said, "I agree. Agree. I like him, but to worship him and defend him even when he's wrong is psychotic." Yeah, it's it, it is. It's a little childish too. But there's whole, you know, it's it's all good. I understand. There's I have friends that are like, listen, I think he'll get it figured out in the end. They're not that invested in it. They're like, I trust Trump. That's fine. I'm not I'm not trying to break people's trust. But it's like, yeah, I, I don't understand the uh, like when something is clearly not right. People are like, he's got. It's like certain things. He really like the H one B visa thing. He's not. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not America first. It's not American worker first. So I appreciate the people like Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram who hold him accountable for it and say, no, you're wrong. To me, I like that, but whatever. Someone said if they let them off, the rule of law means nothing. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I think it's a tricky situation. But at the end of the day, I, I really think, you know, people should... Look into everything. Look into people you agree with. Look into people you disagree with. Listen to me. Listen to others. I do that. I listen to people who are right wing and they don't like Trump. And I listen to people who are left wing and they don't like Trump. And I've learned a lot by listening to people who are right wing and don't like Trump. They make some very good points. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. But, uh, you know, once you learn certain things, you just don't go back. And there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of things that just most most media doesn't cover at all, you know, as far as like who he works with, who's really behind him. And at, at the end of the day, you know, I think it all leads back to the same place, but whatever. Someone said Barr and Durham will do nothing. We'll see. The interesting part to me is I personally probably think they won't do anything. But the people who thought they were like, I'm just being honest. There are people who said Durham is gonna indict and arrest people for years now. If they end up not arresting anybody, you realize the, a lot of these people will never stop. Like they've made statements so many times and been wrong, which is fine, everyone makes mistakes, but their movement is not based on like critical thinking, it's really not. It's based on like a cult-like worship of thinking like Jeff Sessions is gonna arrest people. He doesn't do it, well, we're just joking, it's Bill Barr. And then if Bill Barr doesn't do it, they still will never stop. They'll be like, no, they were like, do you know how many times I've heard that they're happening in private and we just can't see them? Like it, they're, it's gonna be public, everyone's gonna know. And then it doesn't happen, they're like, no, no, no. Well, they secretly did it in private. It's like, well, that's not gonna help anybody. At the end of the day, I think what's gonna unite humanity would be a massive event that everyone can see and hear and identify. And that's what's gonna change people's minds. It's not gonna be like, uh, it didn't happen, so I'm going to pretend like it happened on the USS Mercy. It's it's really like childish and creepy, but the people that do that, they're some of the most intolerant people. They're even worse to me than liberals. They freak out at me and they're like, you want this to happen. I'm like, no, I don't. But just there, there's a clip and uh, it's actually of David Icke. I, I, I'm not going to justify everything he says or does, but it's a clip where he was saying, uh, you know, people want to hear what they they want to hear what they want to be true. So it's easier to, to, to tell somebody what they want to be true. If you tell a bunch of Trump supporters what they want to be true, which is what they're doing, is saying thousands of people are going to be arrested, it's going to be popular because everyone wants it to be real. What's harder is to tell somebody what's, what they don't want to hear. People don't want to hear what they don't want to believe. So, you know, the reason these movements are so big, there is, there is real stuff going on, but at the same time, that's what people want to happen. It doesn't mean it's true. It's just they hope that that happens, so they're attached to that. Same with Russiagate. Russiagate was never going to work, not even close. But Trump haters want Trump to go to jail, so they'll believe anybody that tells them they're going to go to jail. They'll watch Rachel Maddow every weekend. It becomes like a mental illness if you tune into somebody because you want it to happen, but you know it's not real, or you, you know it's it, it's a phenomenon with how stuff works. So the people who get upset with me. I'm not the be all end all. I don't know everything. I weigh out all the options. But at the end of the day, the people who get the most mad are people who don't want to hear anything outside of what they want to believe. And if I sat here and said, mass arrests are happening at the Vatican. The reason Italy shut down is because the Vatican's getting arrested. 
Guys, I'd get 400,000 views on YouTube every day. There's people who said that two weeks, two months ago. Their videos are still up. I like them, but they're like, the Italy's only locked down because the Vatican's getting arrested. That never happened. The U.S. is getting locked down because Trump's really moving on the deep state. It never happened. Trump's giving Fauci a job to expose ha Fauci. I mean, it, it is exposing him, but it also let him gain power. All these organizations, all these people have more power over our country than they ever did before in a way that might never change. And, you know, it's okay to acknowledge that and still like Trump and believe. But that's the difference between believing and hopeful and like cultism, you know, in a sense. It's, it's people want to hear what they want to be true. And if you tell them what's true, what they don't want to be true, they're not going to like you. That's not everybody, but it's, it's a phenomenon on the left and the right. Someone said 6 9 <laughs> 6 ix new song is wild, man. He's, he's a wild guy. That's a rapper, by the way, Takashi. I'm not talking about something else. Someone said corruption and deception is rampant. Yeah, and I, th I think what's interesting, too, is there's a really good uh, interview. If you could find it on YouTube... It's uh, by Yuri Bezmanov. He's like an old KGB agent who defected to the United States and kind of blew the lid on what the KGB was doing. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's one of the best videos on the internet. If you've never heard it, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Yuri Bezm Bezmanov. <clears throat> he explains what's going to happen. And it's, and like it's word for word been happening and it's really happening now as far as destabilization. And he explains how propaganda and brainwashing really works. And it works... It's a psychological phenomenon, so it could be easier on certain people, but it could work in any political thing. And what it is, is like you condition people in a way that even if you put the truth in front of their face, they're not able to believe it. That's how brainwashing works. So it can get to the point where the entire society, let's see if this sounds familiar to you, the entire fabric of society could start crumbling. You could have businesses, economic destruction. You could have tens of millions of Americans out of work. You could have patriots losing freedom in this country. And people are so brainwashed that they're not even able to acknowledge that that's happening. And I hate to say it, but not everybody, but a lot of people who follow these movements, that's how they were acting. They were lashing out at me. They, they, they didn't want to believe that this could be happening. That's called brainwashed. You're so into what you want to believe, you can't even, like, it's like, this isn't water, it's purple. Like that's the extent of how brainwashed certain people on. And a lot of people on the left are like that too. They'll never learn. You know, some people will wake up and break out of it, but some people it's like you could take them to the end stage of humanity where there's like burning buildings everywhere and they still just will be like, this is Trump's fault. Or, you know, like it's, it's how people work. And this is not a theory. Everyone's governments, psychologists have been doing it for decades upon decades and it's documented and it's declassified, it's all real. This is how they operate, it's, it's conditioning. So the way to break that is by not being too emotional, questioning things and also just like you can't worship politicians, you can't worship the big government, you can't think that everybody in politics is like, he's a secret Batman, he's gonna save me, and anybody who tells me otherwise is a terrible person, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna happen to anybody in that way. So just, you know, it's, it's good to like people, love people, support them, have faith. But I think I agree with Jesse Lee Peterson, I've said this before, but he always says the black uh, community went awry and astray when they were given black leaders. He said, you know, at a certain point, he said the black community believed in God and they followed God and they worshiped God and then they gave him Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Jesse believes that was a huge you know, decline to the black community. And I think that the same could be said in the Christian community, white or American, whatever you wanna say, is if you worship God, I think that's fine. If you worship politicians or Trump at like a deity, which is what these movements are doing, they think he, you're gonna, you're, it's gonna be the end of, you know, the values you believe in. I think it's a very clear message. Someone said, you worship Trump, but you don't worship politicians. See, this is a funny, this is a funny thing about, what's up, Derek? It's a funny thing about this stream. So I just got accused by two different people, uh, which is fine, I'm not really upset about it. Someone said I critique Trump too much and all I do is call him out. I'm, I'm, I'm unbiased against Trump. And then somebody just said I worship Trump. So it's amazing. That's perception and perspective too. 
Two different people could watch the same live stream and one person thinks all I do is attack Trump, all I, do, I hate Trump and I, 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 I critique him too much and then someone else thinks I worship him. Isn't that incredible? That's just uh, one means I'm probably doing a good job but also that's percep perception and perspective. I mean clearly I can't be doing both at the same time but that's how, the, you know, how people perceive and everyone perceives things differently. But that's a whole nother talk about your perception and you know your perspective. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate your support. God bless. So I said, Dr. MLK, we need Christian leaders. Yeah, and also, but uh, you know, I, I really do like what Jesse was saying. Even with MLK, obviously I think he was a nice guy, but he got used as well. You know, if you take your eyes off the prize, you take your eyes off God, or I won't say more importantly, but important is taking your eyes off what you believe. If they can move the goalposts with people, that's how you get deceived. You get what I'm saying? They give you a person and they move that person. So MLK, I'm sure he was a nice guy. There's reports that he wasn't. I don't I didn't know him, but you know, obviously he's very well revered in US history. They used MLK as well. You know, they used his whole movement to pass through a bunch of laws and bills, and a lot of them were very detrimental to the black community itself, you know? And uh I'm not saying his ideology wasn't good, but this is how they operate. So MLK was a good guy. Probably, I don't know for sure. But overall, you know, even worship, it's still not a good idea to follow leaders unless your leader is humble, honest, and objective and doesn't try to, you know, steer you away. But I think that's it's important. Someone said, uh, Daniel said, it's like hearing someone I would never want to talk to say exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, well, thank you, Daniel. I don't know if that was a compliment or a diss, but I appreciate it. So I said the book Chicken Little. I'd have to reread it. I forget what it says. Uh, I'm going to read this. Mary said, the worshiping politicians part happened to my family. It's unreal how smart people can be duped. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like at the end of the day, uh, common sense is just so lost. Uh, and it happens to people with PhDs, doctorates. I think it has to do with ego. Because at a certain point, if you're very well educated, not everyone can keep the ego down. But people have such a huge ego that they just get lost in the sauce. And uh, I like another thing that I, I had to talk with Dr. Shiva a couple months ago. One thing he says is I like engineers more than scientists because engineers have to prove it right. If a science data, you know, stat, uh, mathematician, not even whatever, guy who makes data says, oh, this won't work. It's the guy who drives the plane who has to make it work or else it doesn't work. So it's like, you know, they make you think you have all these degrees and you're so smart, but it's the people like the plumber, the truck driver, they actually get stuff done. A lot of other stuff is theorizing. It's the engineer who executes. So a lot of people can't execute. They can't get things done. All they know is like deception and, you know, foolery. So I, I think that's a good example of education does not equal intelligence. It certainly doesn't equal wisdom or common sense. And, uh, you know, no matter how smart you are, if your ego's too high and you're too, like, if you put your mind in the wrong place and you worship politicians or news sources, you're, you're going to turn into a fool. And uh, that's why I think uh, a lot of that stuff's overrated. So I said that was a good interview with Dr. Shiva. He's, he's a fun guy. I like talking to him. So I said I would rather have common sense instead of book smarts. I mean, common sense is probably the best thing you could have in this world. Uh... If you have book smarts with no common sense, you become like a tyrant. You know, these people are like stubborn and selfish and creepy and just don't listen. So I think common sense is is important. And wisdom, I think, is like the true intelligence is wisdom. Being wise, being book smart, but being a fool just makes you a fool. So I think wisdom is and intelligence is more important than uh, book smarts, but especially just common sense and wisdom will get you a lot further than whatever they're teaching. Street smarts, that too. Street smarts is like common sense and wisdom, you know? Street smarts is equivalent to those two words as well, because if you're street smart, it just means you know what's happening. You don't gotta go to school to understand psychology. If you know how to do business, you know how to do business. Some of the smartest, best people didn't even go to college because they just have street smarts, which is being able to be right about things, being able to be honest about things, and instincts, and you know things that can't be taught.
Someone said, I live in France. Contact me, please. I have essential information in you. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but uh, you, could, you could hit me up if you want. Someone said, not being educated doesn't make someone smart either. It's balanced. Well, education is good. I mean, when you're talking about to read and write, you had people who died and struggled for hundreds of years for the ability to be educated. Education is important. Uh, reading, writing, math skills, it's all good. But to be honest, the, the school system needs a total overhaul. It's okay, but they took out faith and replaced it with government. And I think that was kind of a mistake because now it's like you learn math, you learn reading, and that like reading is good. Being able to read, being able to speak, being able to write, like these are important skills. Math, um, but a lot of the stuff they teach is not important and it's just a total scam, a lot of it. But yeah, education's good. So I said, I see what you are, Captain Obvious, but racist, LOL. I don't, I don't know what you're doing, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. You gotta be more. All right, you clearly just don't like me. I get you, Archibaldo. I appreciate you being here for this long, even though you don't like me, but clearly you're having fun too. So I said, education equals indoctrination. Well, no, reading, writing, all that stuff's important, but at a certain point, depending on what you're learning, like people who go to Harvard, if you're learning law or doctor stuff, that's good. But they mix it with so much other stuff. It's like a far left, like, it, I mean, they, they don't allow you to be conservative or like it's, I don't know what they're doing there, but. All right, I'm gonna read this Archibaldo. Thank you for, you said black leaders are bad. Who do you think got these rights for African-Americans? I'm not saying black leaders are bad. I'm saying that people idolizing and worship leaders uh, can be a mistake. And I'm not saying I said that. Jesse Lee Peterson said that. He's an elderly black man who grew up on a plantation, actually. And that's that's his opinion. So you could debate with him. But I'm just saying with Martin Luther King and stuff, they, they snuck through a lot of sneaky laws that weren't exactly good for black Americans. As you know, people got rights in the 1900, but they also duped a lot of black Americans in the late 1900s and took a lot of stuff away and then burden, burdened people with poverty. And the realest black leaders you've never heard of, they talk about Martin Luther King, they don't teach about Malcolm X because Malcolm X didn't uh, stick to the script and that's why you don't learn about him. And same with Marcus Garvey. He was a very famous, I believe, Jamaican uh, American leader in the early 1900s and Marcus Garvey's a fascinating person as well. You never learn about him in school. So that's kind of what I'm saying. There's been good leaders, there's been bad leaders, but. I don't think Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and uh, those type of Don Lemons and stuff, I don't think they're doing anything for the black community. I think Kanye is probably doing more than they are in my perspective, but to each their own. Thanks, Lynn. I appreciate it. Let's well, just say, Archibaldo, you're, you're Hispanic too. I'm part Hispanic as well. It's like, uh, you, what is it, Telemundo or Unidad? It's like Univision. I don't like the people on there. I'm not. I'm not speaking about every Hispanic leader, but it's like Jorge Ramos is not a is not our leader. He's not the leader of the Hispanic. It's like he's the puppet on corporate news. So don't don't get it twisted. I'm not saying every Hispanic or black leader is terrible. I'm just saying they have sneaky ones and they use sneaky ones to deceive us. And what Jesse says is uh, he believes that it's smarter to keep your eyes on God than on uh, the leaders that the media feeds you. That's the point I'm getting. I think you get it though. Appreciate the convo. And said the whole civil wars to free slaves. Yeah, but also it's interesting because I wasn't alive then. Obviously I've read the history books like you have, but uh, listen to Ron Paul talk about the civil war because Ron Paul says the civil war wasn't even about that really. I don't know, I'm not saying it is. I, I listen to history, I listen to these people. But it's like they try to simplify a lot of stuff, I think, with history. And, uh, you know, I think that was obviously a part of it. But I'm guessing it was over banking and other stuff as well, just like a lot of the wars are uh, personally. But, you know, to, to each their own. I think history is written by the winners and history is written by the people who have the contract to write all the history books. And I don't necessarily think those are the most honest people. But I'm not here to, like, question that. I just know that people have and I've been like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Someone said Daryl Davis talked to him. Yeah, Daryl's a great guy. I love the, the thing about Daryl that's amazing is uh, he seems like a liberal left wing type guy. Like I listen to him talk and he falls into a lot of the left wing talking points, but he's he's my 
probably my favorite liberal out of anybody because he doesn't have the victim mentality, you know? And that's the worst part about liberalism is the victim mindset, and that leads you astray. So Daryl Davis is a fascinating guy, and uh, he's, he's like a total non-victim and a total go-getter, you know? He de-radicalized a bunch of, you know, KKK members by communicating with them and talking to them and doing interviews with them when, when racism was way more extreme. He's a wild guy. So Daryl Davis is a cool guy. I like, I like uh, his, his mindset on that. I think his politics are a little whack, but that's okay. Someone said there was so much more to the Civil War about taxation. Yeah, of course. Even with certain things, this is how they operate. And this is why we talk about it here. I'm not saying MLK was a terrible person. I'm not saying the Civil War wasn't wasn't a, a good result, but they, they simplify it to make you think that everything they're doing is always right. You better believe it was about taxation and money interest as well for these people. And it's the same with World War II. It's the same with anything. They make it like a black and white type story so they don't explain every other aspect of it. You know, there's people involved in what they say was the worst tragedy in the 20th century and they brought 1,600 of those people to the United States in a secret operation to bring them into U.S. government. So if they were that bad, why did they come into government? So somewhere the story's not adding up. You brought bad people into the government? Well, that's not good, but I can't say that's not good. So they use events. That's why at the border or anywhere, they always pick a woman, a leader, a child to represent a whole nother agenda. They, they can't just tell you what they're doing. They need a, it's like a pill. They need an easy, easy swallow. So I think a lot of things in history, they put a face on it. Same with the climate change movement. I mean, they put a young woman on it who's below 18 because who wants to attack, if you attack Bill Nye or Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's like no one cares. Uh, but if you disagree with a 16 year old girl, then all of a sudden you're a terrible person. So that's all I'm saying. Just be very aware that that that's kind of an easy way to get people to agree with certain things someone said it devastated this the southern economy and states rights yeah I, I i wouldn't disagree i haven't fully looked into that but i understand that aspect of it where they sell every like everything bad people do they sell it as a good thing i'm not saying you know uh and that and that's even with like when Kanye was talking about it and, and a lot of people in, in, in the black community got upset, they were like, how dare him talk about slavery? But what he was saying was like, I wouldn't have made it last that long. That's what I got it. He, like when he said it was a choice, I didn't take him as like, oh, we meant to do it. But if you look into the history of slavery, you know, from where it started and stuff, there were multiple races involved. There were people selling out their own people. That's the story of it. So what he was saying, what I heard from it, was I wouldn't have let it happen. Like he has like a Harriet Tubman type mentality where he's like, I would have made it end quicker. That's the type of leader he is. That's why Kanye gets so much stuff done. So people just, they, they stick on to these things and say, you can't question it, but they sell everything. Like if you listen to the worst people in history, they're like, we, for, we ended the war, we Martin Luther King. And it's like these people behind closed doors are writing all sorts of legislation to destroy people, to destroy the black community, to destroy America, to destroy the South. And, you know, the more you look into certain events, you're like, it, they sell it as like one. I'll give you another example, and then we'll move on. And then I'm going to go. I'm getting kind of tired. But uh, with bills, when they say, like Trump says, you can't, like Thomas Massey questioned Trump and said, you know, I don't like this trillion dollar bill. And Trump's like, you're a third rate politician. And he starts bashing Thomas Massey and the same thing with the trillion dollar bill. They're like hot thousands of pages. So they sell it to you as we're helping small businesses. We're helping you with a $1,000 paycheck. Do you think that's what the bill says? It just says, we're helping you with a paycheck. We're gonna save small businesses. No, it's thousands of pages, hundreds of pages. So every world event is like that. It's thousands of pages, it's hundreds of pages. The Civil War was not just fought over slavery, taxation, states' rights, you know, differences in political opinion, but the people who won the war said, we saved everybody and we're the greatest people ever. So. Same with Martin Luther King. It's like, they, they didn't just say, oh, we're gonna free everybody and make you know black America more free. They passed so many laws and regulations that even had nothing to do with black America and had to do with other stuff. So they always hide their deceptive stuff behind really good things, which is, uh, you know, and then if you question it, they say you're attacking the good thing, where it's like, I'm not attacking Martin Luther King. I'm not attacking the Civil War, but I wanna know what else happened. And it's the same with, uh, 
the history of a, a lot of stuff. It's it's not very nuanced, you know, as far as what they say. It's like black, white, right, wrong, and it's it's just not true. They do that because they won, and anybody who wins the war, whether it's World War One, World War Two, you know, the Americans. Why do we learn that America was great? Why did we learn that for so long? Because we won whatever war we fought in the 1700s against the Native Americans. If they would have won against, you know, Christopher Columbus or who else ever was there, then they wouldn't have wrote that in the history books. So I think people understand that edge of it. It goes with everything. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate it. God bless. Mark said, I think you can confuse people. Probably. But uh, yeah, I'm going to have to watch the Trump clip after this about the hydroxychloroquine. I might, some people I probably confuse, some people I'm very clear. It It's all perspective, you know. I do what I can. I like to comment, but every time I do, I lose the audio. Are you being censored? Uh, I don't know. It could be your browser or the app you're using. Um, I'm not sure. You got to ask other people if it happens. But I'm going to stay for like two more minutes and then I'm going to take off. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this to uh, YouTube probably after this. And then uh, check it out on bitshoot.com as well. Do you, uh, all right. We'll, we'll end on this question because I got to go. Uh, Madison said, thank you, Madison, for being here. Madison said, do you think Trump has to do Operation Warp Speed or he will be told how horrible he is doing uh, everything possible not to fight the virus? Uh, no, I don't, I don't. Personally, I don't think so. I think like in general, here's, this is a good point to end. That's not a good, you could do what you want, but I don't think that's a good angle for Republicans to take. Like, oh, Trump has to do this because then he'll please the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is never going to be pleased. The media is never going to be pleased. The health industry is never going to be pleased. They're never going to give him credit, even if he finds a cure and cures everybody. They're never going to give him credit. They're never going to be honest about it. So there is no angle for him to please them with it. That's that's the excuse people are making because they want to believe that you know Trump would never do anything that they didn't want him to do. And I'm not saying he might have an angle, but the the angle of he's doing it so he doesn't look guilty they're going to say he did Pearl Harbor. They're going to say he killed tens of millions of people. They're never going to stop. So that's not really a good excuse, I don't think. I think that if that's the logic he's going by, it's a mistake because they're not going to give him credit. And uh, I don't think so because there's a lot of other things to do. And the science behind vaccines is pretty clear as far as uh, can we rush a vaccine that quickly? There's no guarantees. Will it work? There's no guarantees. Will it be safe? They don't know that yet or else it would be on the market tomorrow. And most importantly, is it going to eradicate coronavirus? No. Do they know if coronavirus is going to be a real problem in the next two years? They don't. My guess is it's not going to be over the next year or two, and we we got to look out for something else. So overall, I think, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's doing it to please the left wing, and I don't think if he was doing it to please the left wing that they're ever going to be pleased. So people need to, in my view get out of uh, that mindset of like anytime he does something that anytime he does something they like, he did it. He's sticking it to the left wing. He doesn't care about Morning Joe. He doesn't care about Obama. He'll say anything. He'll do anything. And then when he doesn't do what they want him to do, they say, oh, well, he's just pleasing them. There is no pleasing them. That's not an angle that makes sense. And I think people need to, you know, just, you could be patient if you want, but you know, don't, I think personally, not to get in the habit of, uh, you know, thinking he's pleasing them. Because there is no pleasing them. They're going to blame him anyway, so he's got to do the right thing. And he's got to, I'm excited for the interview today. People got to keep telling him he's got to count the numbers properly. Colorado is changing the numbers because they're counting accurately. There's rumors that Trump's pressuring the CDC. I don't know that that's true. I just heard it. It's a rumor, uh, and I'll tell you that. But he needs to let people know the right numbers and then the whole death count's gonna change and it's gonna make him look better. That's the angle. He can't go, regardless of what he's thinking, he can't go the mass testing, mass ventilators, quick vaccines. It's a it's a lose-lose. He's never gonna get credit and I certainly don't think it's gonna help us any. That's my thoughts So You can let me know yours, but I appreciate the comment and hopefully that made sense. Um, God bless you guys, I appreciate it. This is gonna go on YouTube and BitChute after this. And hopefully I'll have a new video tomorrow. I'm going to work on one later today. Put it out tomorrow like one of my nice clean videos. Should be a good one. And uh, that's what it is. I appreciate you guys being here.